Hello everybody and welcome to lesson four of Design and Technology Non-Exam Assessment at King Alfred's Academy. Uh, this week we are looking at the market research uh, side of the uh, project um, and we'll look at what that means for us uh, as we go through the set of slides. So just a quick recap of what we did in previous weeks. So lesson one was choosing our context and producing a project ideas mind map. Lesson two was a, once we've got a greed project, uh, doing a mind map about that exact product that you want to make, as well as our research plan, so planning our activities that we're going to undertake. And then lesson three, so what you've completed last week, was our mood board and product analysis. And at that point, you should have sent it, uh, your teacher a copy so that's saved on show my homework as a backup we don't want any work going missing so it's really important to save as your work as a backup with us okay we every year without fail there's always one or two students that forget to back up their work and then it does go missing at some point during the year so please do back it up with us and also yourself so that was in the past what we're going to do now is look at market research so market research will help us to identify what already exists and where there's a gap in the market, as well as understanding what our client wants. So we're going to create a survey, we're going to ask people to fill it in, and then we're going to analyse the results. So why? OK, why, what, why is this important and why are we going to be doing this? And it goes back to the MART scheme like everything does. So I've highlighted in green here the key bits in the MART scheme. So we need to investigate client needs and wants and factors including economic and social challenges. And then in the mark scheme there, in the band nine to 12 on the right hand side, a user and client has clearly been identified and is entirely relevant to, in all aspects, to the contextual challenge. And student has undertaken a compre comprehensive investigation of their needs and wants with clear explanation and justification of all aspects of these. So we're trying to understand here what your target market wants okay you're designing a product somebody somewhere will want this product you're working out what the that person who wants your product uh, will need from the product okay so two questions for you to think about before we go on to the next slide uh, and i'll give you the answers on the next slide what is market research and why do we undertake it other than the fact it's in the mark scheme obviously that's an obvious answer so pause for a moment and then Click go again when you're ready. So market research, okay, is looking at what is available to buy on the market and taking ideas from it. So we did some of that is what we did last week. And that's often sort of secondary market research, looking at existing products. The primary market research is where we are going to interview or ask a group of relevant people some relevant questions. Um, so if you're designing, uh, I don't know, a light, because that's the example we're going to be using as teachers, you're not going to ask them, OK, what type of car they drive. because that's, that's not relevant. That's not going to help you design a lamp for them. So making sure the questions we ask are going to be useful to you and to the project you are undertaking. OK. Moving forward slightly. So our first task, we are going to create a survey. OK, that we can send to a group of people and your survey should contain at least 10 questions. Now, if I just tell you go and do that, you probably will end up with a bit of an interesting survey. that's maybe not as detailed and not as linked to our projects as we can. So I'm going to talk through some hints and tips over the next couple of slides. OK, but this task is going to take 30 minutes. I suggest you watch this part of the video, then undertake it. So creating a survey. There's two types of questions I want us to consider for our survey. One are closed questions. These are really, really useful for drawing graphs and getting conclusions and sort of analysing information because you can have yes, no answers. OK, and that's really nice in the, in the, in, in the world because things can be black or white. Like, what's your favourite colour? Black or white. Um, go slightly political. Do you vote to leave the EU or remain in the EU? You can make a nice pretty graph where one's bigger than the other and say, well, that's what everyone wants. OK, and rightly or wrongly, 
that will then be some information you can use in your project moving forward. So yes, no answers are, nice, are relatively straightforward. You can draw a nice pretty graph off the back of that. Or we have multiple choice uh, questions. The standard one would be, what is your favorite color? And you can have a range of colors, red, blue, green, pink, yellow, purple, whatever. And people can just tick which one or multiples they really like, and then you can draw a graph from that. So those are, those are really useful type of questions, really easy for you to collect answers because you can stand there, ask a question, and just tick, 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 and make a tally chart. Open questions, our second type of questions, are really good for getting people's thoughts and ideas. So you'll ask them, what is your favorite sport? And you could have a list of sports or you can just leave it open because they might want to say, you know what, my favorite sport is actually kabaddi. And you've never heard of kabaddi or it's cub, that's K-U-B-B, some weird wacky sport you've never heard of. And you get a big list of sports. Equally, your favorite color question, somebody might say, you know what, it's tangerine orange. Not just orange, it's tangerine orange and very specific. So open questions allow a lot more answers to be given but or equally can be quite difficult to analyze okay but i would try and get a mix okay so things to consider asking about and it'll this will vary depending on your project you've all got different project ideas with different needs okay uh, but age range and gender you could ask them how old you can ask somebody how old are you and they can say i'm I'm 35. Yes, I really am. Uh, but actually, that's maybe not useful. Maybe going, are you aged between zero and 12? Are you aged 13 to 19? I'm thinking teenagers, the teenage lifestyle project there. Are you aged 20 to 34? I've just put myself into the 35 plus category. Um, so that's a, an option. You can do groups of ages. Um, then you might, some, you might have some questions about aesthetics to get some ideas as to what people want their product to look like. I would look at what type of products they already own. So if you're look, doing a project linked to skateboarding, what type of skateboards do people own? Are there types of skateboards? You're going to laugh at me there. I don't know. This is where your project, you will know more about it than I will. Uh, you might look at how much money people have available to buy things, what functions they like what materials they like, what um, environmental or safety features they want or need or like. There's a whole host of questions there. Now, on the next page, I've got a, a waggle of some questions you could ask. And you might look, go through that waggle and go, oh, that question I really like. So I might use that question. So do have a lamp in your room. Like we said, we're using lighting as our uh, waggle that we're going to work through, me and Miss Anderson. And she wrote this, this waggle for us here. Uh, so do you have a lamp in your bedroom? Yes, no. If you know people have a lamp, maybe they don't need a lamp. Or maybe we just know then that people have lamps and will want to buy more lamps. What type of bulb do you use? What does your lamp sit on? Is, does it go on desk and nightstand or, or its own table? If you're designing for my desk here, which is made of glass, that's going to be somewhat different to a lamp that's on my bedside table, which is made of wood. Um, what do you use your lamp for? These are really good questions and you can have a variety of answers to them. Uh, if you could have a lamp designed on any theme, what theme would you choose? So that's a nice open question. We can get a load of different answers there. So I'm actually using some of these questions in the waggle next as well. Um, so you'll see how this might progress. So that is your task. Half an hour to write. I'm saying 10 questions. You might have more, you might have slightly less, but 10 is a good number to work towards, okay? If it's only one or two questions, that's probably not enough. Uh, I'll be looking for around 10, so eight to 12 questions. So task two, which doesn't require any, I'm gonna say physical writing work, but will require you to actually do something here. Uh, you need to ask people to complete the survey. Obviously you aren't spending as much time uh, with people in school, but you might use WhatsApp, Facebook, pick up the phone. Uh, you might use some time when you're in school, um, Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, to speak to other people in your class, just to very quickly ask them some questions. Use the correct type of people. 
when you're asking them. So if you're planning to do the teenage lifestyle um, theme, context, sorry, not much point asking a five-year-old and not much point asking me because I could give you some lovely answers to your survey, but my answer of what I want from a product will be very different to what a teenager wants, unfortunately. Okay, so think about that. Try and focus your your asking to certain certain groups, and then collate the responses. Now you could, and this is how I used to do it as a teacher many years ago. Now we would get students to print off twenty copies of their survey and hand them to people. They'd fill them in and then hand them back. So you do a wad of paper. No need. Print it once, or even write it by hand at this point. You could then just sit there. Let's say, as an example. We're going to do a lovely example here. Here's my client. Mr. Badger, what is your favourite colour? Pink. Tally. Mr. Giraffe, what is your favourite colour? Red. Red. Tally chart and just make it keep a list. And you are right, I have lockdown is starting to affect me in strange ways i am slowly losing my marbles uh, if i had them at all to start with i have puppets for my lessons um so tally charts quite an easy way of getting uh, responses so that should take you about half an hour okay but it might be lots of little two minutes here two minutes there to complete that task okay once you've completed it do move on so we're going to now start writing our actual market research page in our PowerPoint. To start with, the first thing you want to do on this page is add a title, market research, and then an introduction to the page. So I've, I've written a waggle here for you, but for writing an introduction, you just want to explain what you've done. I've written a, a survey. I have then asked 15, 20, 30 people to complete my survey to gain some results so I can learn from them. That's pretty much it. But you want to be quite specific how many people have you asked i've asked uh, 20 elderly relatives um because i'm making a product for an elderly person try and be that specific in there so you've got my my example there for you okay at the bottom of that page i've not done it as a separate page because you'll see the final page of all these bits joined up uh, in a moment so we've written a survey we've got some people to give us some answers and we've written an introduction. Now we need to do some work with this. We're going to start creating some graphs and charts of our results. Then we're going to copy and paste those graphs and charts from Excel into your PowerPoint. So you've got some nice pretty graphs in your PowerPoint. We're going to make sure there's a title to each of these graphs. So the, the title would be the question. Okay, what was the question that, that graph shows? Then really important, underneath every graph table chart that we produce here, we can uh, add a sentence to say what that graph shows us. What have we learned from that question? Uh, and there's examples and instructions on the next slide. And if you have open questions, you want to just write a sentence or short paragraph explaining what you've got as answers to your open questions. Now it says use Excel here, and I'm going to go through an example of using Excel. You can also do this by hand and on the waggle at the end, there is one I've done by hand just to show you now, it doesn't all have to be done on the computer if you don't have access to it. So here's step by steps. So in Excel, um, Excel does wonderful stuff. It'll draw the graphs for you. What you want to do is, in the first instance, expand column A, make that wider so you can write the questions in there. Okay, uh, And it just means you can see everything. It all looks a little bit neater. So I've gone for which type of lamp do you prefer? Desk lamps, bedside lamps, wall lights, ceiling lights and Mr. Badger and Mr. Giraffe and Mr. Leopard, Lion and Sooty, um, well I think it was an owl somewhere as well, they all gave me answers. Uh, I, it's, uh, like I said, I am losing it, I'm talking to the animals. Uh, and those are the answers there. Okay, so seven for desk light, four for better light, two for wall light, ceiling light, respectively. Uh, same with the next set of questions down. So write the questions, then I've got the number of people that have answered and I've Drop the number in there. So I took my tally chart, I had seven people that said that's like, I counted them up and wrote the word seven in there. That's the results so far. Next slide, okay, shows you how to make the graph. 
So all you need to do is draw a box around the question, the answers and the score. OK, once you've done that in the top left of the page there. Click on insert, so I'm colouring that in there, insert. Then you want to click on recommended charts. I'm colouring that in again. And once you're in there, it'll give you some recommended charts. You can also click on all charts if you want to get a different chart and have a look at them. Um, but the recommended charts will normally be the right sort of chart for you. But you do want to just make sure you are picking the uh, the right chart for you. So take that, take that a little bit of time. Once you've got a chart in front of you there, okay, you can then, you'll see it's in Excel and you just right click on it, copy it and paste it into PowerPoint. It's, 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 it's really that simple. Okay, copy and paste it into PowerPoint and then we're gonna move on to my waggle that's on the next page. So here's my waggle um, with the what type of lamp do you prefer? Um, graph there as a pie chart and I've put the percentages on there there's lots of options and then I've written a nice little sentence there from from this pie chart you can see that nearly half of all people would prefer if I made a desk lamp you can also see that they would prefer that I shouldn't make a wall or ceiling light I've said nothing of the bedside light so if I wanted to make a bedside light I probably could still um, so there's a sentence underneath it there's a really clear title which is the question and then on my other one on the left hand side there, I did it by hand. I drew that up in about two minutes flat, um, just, to, just to show you that it can be done. Uh, if this is my GCC work, I'd probably spend a bit more time, make it a little bit neater, uh, maybe use a ruler, um, as an important tool there. Uh, and then this chart shows that most people would like my product to be to use either red, blue or green. Amazingly, uh, statistics can be made to pretty much tell whatever you want. So I want my product to be red. Okay, I do. I've decided that, I want a red product. But most people want blue or green. So I've just spun my words slightly to say, well, imagine most people want red, blue or green. Am I wrong? No, I think you'll find that something around 80% of people want it to be red, blue or green. Well, I'm not, what I haven't really said is only 20 odd percent want it to be red. I've, I've spun the lies slightly. Okay, it's amazing how you can do how you can do all sorts of things when you've got a pretty graph in front of you. Uh, and then in the middle bottom there, I've said if you could have a lamp designed in any theme, what theme would you have? So that was my open question from earlier, and I've written down some of the key ideas that I got. I've not written down all of them. I've just written down some of the ideas that I liked. Nobody else needs to know what other ideas there were, and if other people like them, I've written what I liked. And you can do the same for yours, okay? And the introductions there, and that would become a finished page. Try and fit as many graphs as you can onto your pages. I would be looking four or five graphs onto a page would be about right, uh, just the useful ones, and filling the page with all that little, all those little bits of text. Obviously, you're going to be using a, a smaller font than I have for my example there. So that is everything for our lesson this week. Um, hopefully you'll find that useful. As ever, please do submit it at the end of the week, just so we keep that back up, as well as me being able to check it over, and then I will offer uh, some guidance uh, as and when I can as well. I hope you're all well, and I look forward to seeing you in school soon. Take care and goodbye.